Hello and welcome to another edition of On The Spot. I'm Ryan McDonald. I'm Rich Galp. How's everyone doing? We got a great show lined up for you today. We got tell them about what we got. Sure, we got a great show. I'm going to start off right now. I'm going to tell you coming up momentarily an exclusive game premiere right, right here on On the Spot. We actually get to show the game off all, just like never seen before. Well, I guess that's not kind of true because there was the, we'll, we'll we'll tell you the full story a little bit later, but. Trust us, it's basically a world premiere right here on On The Spot. I'm looking at it on a TV right now, and it's pretty much like the coolest looking game I've seen in like in months. It, it looks really cool. It is a pretty awesome game. We're also going to have some Hot Shots Golf. Hot Shots Golf 4 with our buddy Justin Calvert, straight over from the UK. I'll be sitting down with him talking some Hot Shots, and actually maybe I'll be playing against him. That's right. We're cool. also going to be talking some game tournaments. Some, some, some game tournaments are happening right now, as well as there was one last week we went to. We'll be telling you more about that a little bit later. And it wouldn't be on the spot, of course, without Ricardo Torres, and he'll be here with another uh, a slew of games imported from Japan, as well as Beautiful Joe for the PlayStation 2. That's right. Import Watch Week. Continues, but the, the cool thing also we're gonna have the Street Fighter anniversary collection come by too, so we'll take a look at that. Oh, very cool. But uh, but yeah, th can I get on my crazy business? I want to tell people. Sure, about? go right ahead. Ryan's been dying to tell everyone. He found out <laughs> some stuff, and he just won't stop talking about it. Ryan, just just tell everybody. Okay. So the the one thing I'll remind you is we get questions. Uh, if you're a Gamespot complete member, you'll see right on the on the spot page. You can go ahead and use the form that's built into the page to send us questions. We'll get them right here, right here on the spot. We'll answer them. Uh, we asked some questions about SOCOM 2. One guy wanted us to get some kind of crazy eight-player land thing going or something like that. But, you know, that's a lot of work. We, we, just don't have, <laughs> we just don't have that kind of time. Sorry. But I do have some exciting SOCOM 2 uh, news that came out of Sony that I thought was super interesting and I thought I'd share with you guys at home. Numbers are always interesting. Numbers are always interesting. These are, like, astronomical numbers. So, it's, I think it's, so here it is. Since May 1, 2004, SOCOM 2 has averaged 373,000 play hours per day. That's 400, th almost 400,000 hours a day? A day. Awesome. Uh, the, the numbers continue, though. Uh, you know, of course, it's just from Sony, so they want to throw in a little little Sony jab in there. So if you counted it all, the Xbox Live games together, that's more, you know, the SOCOM 2 is more than all the Xbox Live games combined. Uh, the total numbers of player hours for SOCOM 2 is fast approaching 94 million hours, or the equivalent of 10,835 years of straight gameplay. Wait, let, let, me get that, <laughs> let me get that jab at Xbox clear again. So you're saying more player hours daily are being logged on SOCOM 2 than every Xbox title in the world? That's online, yeah. That's, that's, that's a lot. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, even nine months after the launch, SOCOM 2 is still seeing more than 30,000 simultaneous users per day. Far and away more than any other console title that is uh, that is out there. So I mean, it's, it's crazy stuff. SOCOM 2. I was kind of a fan. I, I was really a big fan of the first game. Uh, I know there's still a lot of people playing out there. You know, seeing these numbers kind of make me think, maybe I should get my SOCOM 2 back on. You know, because when I was on there, you know, there was a lot of people, but you know, apparently there's a, there's, there's still there's, a lot there's of people. more. And so. I'm sorry, go ahead. All right, I was just going to say, this is a great example. You guys send us some questions. We're going to research them for you. So use that form you see as a GameSpot Complete member. Send it to us. We'll, we'll dig up some great numbers for you. And, and there's going to be some. We're going to give the, the live viewers a little treat today. Uh, we're going to actually offer them some prizes, right? Oh, that's right. We've got some great GameSpot t-shirts we're going to give away. And uh, I'll have more information on that later on in the show. And that's going to be kind of a quick draw thing. So if you know your trivia, you're going to be able to send in a message. And if you're the first one, you'll get the, and with the correct answer anyways, you'll get, you'll get the prize. I'll give you two t-shirts. How about <laughs> So should we go ahead and just go ahead and go straight to our, uh, I think I can't, big I can't, debut? you're making me watch this game for too long. We've got to start telling people about it so I can start playing it. Excellent. All right. Let's go ahead and roll the tape. We basically got a developer interview all queued up for you. So without further ado, here's Alien Hominid. My name is Tom Fulp, and I am the creator of Newgrounds.com. It's uh, the web's largest collection of Flash artists, uh, game designers, uh, animators. You know, they all go there to showcase their Flash. Um, I used to go to Newgrounds and check stuff out, and I would submit stuff there. And you know, I would always check out Tom Fulp's stuff. You know, uh, to see his games, and he did all kinds of different ones, and that was really cool. Uh, he seemed to be one of the better action scripters out there, so I decided to throw him an email with uh, some concept art and say, you know, you want to do stuff? And he said, yeah. So we made some uh, projects, and Alien Hominid was one of the early ones. I got involved with Alien Hominid when uh, I actually met Dan online. Uh, one day he came to me and he had the Alien character. He's like, you know, let's make a game with this guy. So we talked about, you know, doing one in the traditional side-scroller spirit and, uh, you know, we went ahead and, you know, built, built the side-scrolling run, jump and shoot game, uh, added a few new elements like the head chomp, which was a big fan favorite, and uh, basically put it up on Newgrounds. We noticed it was getting a lot of, you know, positive response and 
and from a lot of people. I mean, over six million downloads just on Newgrounds. I mean, there's hundreds of other sites who have posted it as well. Um, so we were like, hey, you know, people like this. A friend of mine happened to send me a link to the prototype of Alien Hominid that was hosted on Newgrounds, and I played it and I loved it. I really, I hated playing it on the keyboard, but I loved the visual style of the game. And one day I was playing the game in my office, and, I, and one of the new guys came by, and he poked his head in, and he said, oh, I made that game. And, uh, and I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> and he said, yeah, and, and, and I said, well, you know, we should really make a console version of this. The rest is history. We formed a new company and basically took a very experienced team and, and made just a fantastic game, beating about every odd you can imagine. <laughs> And I still give credit to John, though, for saying, let's make this into a console game. I, I you know, it never really crossed my mind, but once it was out there, it, was, it sound, sounded kind of appealing. Uh, one day, Dan emailed me. He's like, yo, the guys here want to do a console version of Alien Hominid. You know, what do you think? And I'm like, you know, okay, you know, let's give it a shot. And uh, next thing you know, they had everything, you know, put together and they were ready to go. So we just jumped right in and started working on the console version. Um, we were contacted by uh, John Baez, who's the producer on Alien Hominid, and um, John had known us, I guess, from our Capcom days, and he came up and brought us the game, and when we first looked at it, our first sense of it was, boy, this is going to be tough to get past Sony, <laughs> uh, because it's a 2D side-scrolling, uh, button-mashing, fun arcade game, but that's not it doesn't push the technology button that Sony likes to see. Um, but we liked the game a lot. It was colorful, it was fun. The most important part was it was fun. And um, as we sat and looked at this game, we said, you know, this has got something that, with the hand-drawn graphics in it, this has got something that we haven't really seen. By the time we had decided um, on Turning it into a console game, I had improved enough in 2D where I knew I was gonna I was gonna redo everything, um, and I knew there was a lot more to do other than just the original graphics. We made this game just gigantic in scale. First off, we had to get the ergonomics correct for a uh, for a controller. Yeah, we wanted to make full use of the controller, so we added uh, buttons such as the L and R buttons, let you do the rolling and the flipping to dodge bullets and, you know, have more maneuverability than traditional side-scrolling run-and-jump games. Uh, you know, we added the, the button, like the use button that you can use to get into vehicles and drive them around because we thought that would be a, a hit. Then we, uh, we thought we'd add, you know, a lot more weapon power-ups, uh, you know, just bigger explosions, more sprites. You know, with Flash, you're always limited to, you know, how much it takes before it crashes their computer. So, you know, with this we were able to go crazy with just having as many explosions and shrapnel and, you know, body part particles, you know, flying all over the screen. And next we knew that, that what was online was just a simple prototype and we needed to build a story around the game. The story is uh, basically, you know, you, your ship's been shot down over Earth, you know, you were, you were just passing by. You know, the FBI saw you on their screens and they had to shoot you down because you were a hostile threat. So now you're stuck on Earth and you got to get your ship back, which uh, of course will involve blowing up every single thing in your path to get it. Uh, you know, it's not the most original storyline, but it's a real good vehicle for getting, you know, the alien from point A to point B. Uh, he's chasing after a ship all across the globe and just destroying everything on the way. We needed to look at how many different uh, you know, different things the alien could do besides just run, jump, and shoot, because he is a, a very unique character. There's a lot of little things that just kind of came to be. I drew the alien holding uh, the, the PDA screen, which was originally just going to be a menu. But then we decided, you know, wouldn't it be cool if he could play the games in there? From that point a year ago, enabled us to do a number of revisions as we uh, proceeded with development of the game and that really made it, it kind of fermented the game into what it is today which is a very rich mix of, 
of gameplay styles. The reason why we, we picked this genre as opposed to you, you know the, the crazy 3D you know that everyone's doing nowadays is you know we've always been big fans of it and we haven't seen it faithfully reproduced in 3D. You know you always lose something when you create the 3D universe you know as opposed to just the flat you know I see my guy I see my platform I see my bullets just you know going left and right on the screen. And uh, we basically just tried to take everything we liked about those games and throw it all into you know one cool new game with uh, an original character. And you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of people revisit old games. You know, it's great when they re-release an old game on the new consoles, but you know, it's been a while since someone's made a new character. So we want to give people a new character who's you know for their generation, who's you know looks great, hand drawn, uh, you know, has lots of cool moves and animation. Well, there you go, Alien Hominid. Joining me on stage right now is Ricardo Torres. Welcome. Howdy. So Alien Hominid, a worldwide premiere, although like me and Rich alluded to at the beginning, we were talking that it was actually a Flash game to begin with, right? Yep. Um, sort of the prototype for the game started out as like a Flash game that Tom put up on Newgrounds that he made with like Dan the artist. So people right now can go to Newgrounds.com and try out the Flash game? Yeah. But just bear in mind, it's like, it's like somebody looking at your high school freshman year pictures as opposed to your senior year because the actual console games got a ton more to it. And this is actually what we got running right now. It and is. And you are doing the double team. Yes, we are. And, Get uh, your power from the fat kid. But this is your, your live look at Alien Hominid for the first time anywhere. And uh, so you want to tell the people a little bit, I know they were in the developer interview, they were talking about the storyline. Yeah. You want to go into a little bit more of detail of what you can do in this game? Well, no, you can die a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard. <laughs> this, is, um, this is really kind of a hard, it, it's a fun kind of hardcore shooter. You can get in the car, pop in the car, dude, up oh. in triangle. Right. I'm on top of the car. You get, come on. What do I get? Up in triangle, come on. Triangle. Uh, I'm in triangle. Oh, maybe not. All right, roll Actually, down. you know what? This is a single player car. Oh, the, the vehicle? Yeah, there's, um, th this, is, this is a good time to talk about the fact there's single and like uh, two player vehicles. Two player vehicles? That you guys can hop on into. Now, some of the stuff I saw in the developing Boss. Like there was like little spaceships. There, ooh. Oh, oh. See, you gotta learn how to dive. Oh, <laughs> I died. See? The, uh, now, you can do the rolls and you can do all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. The one question I have is uh, whether or not, whether or not, like, one of the questions that had come in from one of our viewers already was, now, this game is gonna come out retail, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, the guys are looking at having it come out in October or so, fall, uh, and it's gonna be for PS2 and GameCube, um, and they're pretty excited about it. It's their first game, <laughs> consoles, um, and they really seem to be having an awesome time uh, putting it. Oh, I died again. Putting it together. So, the one other question I have now: this coming from a brand new company, these guys actually haven't done a whole lot. Yeah. You want to tell us a little about the, the company and where they're from, and you know how it all happened? The Behemoth is pretty pretty indie. Um, they're very low key, um, very unassuming. They have uh, a very, very small uh, workspace in San Diego, which um, we actually had a chance to check out. And we and actually have a video of it. Were we going to meet his boss? Oh, his, his, life, his life bar's up top. Come oh. on. You know how to play games, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. The, uh, I mean, it's like I keep on throwing these grenades. Oh, we got him. You got him. We got him. See? Awesome. Now, the art style in this game is awesome. Those are the FBI guys right there. Right? Yeah. Uh, how long, how many levels? I know you've been playing this a little bit, right? Yeah, we've been playing a lot of it, actually. <laughs> you want to tell the folks at home, like, how, how, you know, how far into it we've gotten? Uh, we've gotten basically to the second proper level. Because the way it works out is, you know, it, it's like the old school shooters where it's like level one is actually like one one, one two, one three, one four, one five, mm -hmm. uh, and then you switch over to two. So we've gotten all the way to level two, and then a really wicked boss kind of killed us, and we actually had to stop and go <laughs> home. So that's fine. So what's our, how do I? I, know I was chopping somebody's head in a second ago, but how do I get into? Uh, how do we get under the ground and like pull them into the ground? Push down in triangle. Down in triangle. And then just, um, just wait. wait for somebody. Let's, oh, here just, comes let's somebody. hang out. See, you just grab him and go. You missed it. Oh, oh. Grab him and you, you go drown. Oh. oh, oh, I drowned it in the ground. Yeah, oh. you die. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. You gotta breathe. So when are we looking at this game actually coming out? October. October. Yep. It's coming out quick. And some of the guys on the team, like um, Bill Gardner, he's from Capcom originally. Right? Yeah. Uh, Bill Gardner is actually part of O3, who are publishing the game. And now. Uh, 
the, the awesome thing is, so these guys definitely know games. It's not like their first time, even though they're a small startup. No. They got all kinds yeah. of good action. You know, it's kind of like one of those super groups. One of the super groups? Yeah, you know. Oh, get in the car, triangle. All right. There we go. We're actually going to give our, 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 the folks at home a chance to see Behemoth Studio and uh, give them a look at what a small time operation uh, can actually turn out. You know, this game right here is proof positive that even if you're a small company, you can make some pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and roll the tour. Even though our name is the Behemoth, we're not as big as you might think. Come on up. We're up on the third floor now, and this is our conference room. Come on in. This is where we actually built our cases for our Comic-Con booth. We do a lot of the hands-on production in this room, and then we do the console development out here. So we're just located in a large commercial loft packed with people 24 hours a day. All of our skateboard manufacturing is done in another part of San Diego. And then it's shipped to our warehouse. So our, our figurines are made overseas and then they're shipped into San Diego and they're all packed out here. We've started production about 14 months ago and our previous employers used to be located in high rent industrial parks with absolutely no character at all. <laughs> so when we started our own company we decided that we would move downtown and create a workspace that is very creative and conducive to making uh, a new type of video game. This is our mascot head from Comic-Con. This year we decided to go all out and have a uh, walk around mascot made by some friends of ours in LA and it was fabulously successful. Alright, hey everybody, we're back. What's going on? I'm sitting here with my man Justin Calvert. Justin, welcome to the show. Is this your first time appearing on camera for Games Live? It is, yeah. Great, and we got a great game for you to sh for you to show us right now in Hot Shots Golf 4. What can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, well this, yeah, this is Hot Shots Golf 4 from Sony. It's, uh, it's going to be the first game in the series to have online play. Uh, we don't have that set up right now, unfortunately. So, um, so I'm, I'm playing against a CPU character right now, trying to unlock him so that uh, so we can use him later on. In case you guys are worried, the reason why we're not having an online gaming competition today is because I've got extremely jealous of all of you, and I'm going to end up playing Justin later on. <laughs> and what mode will we be playing later? Uh, we're going to play the mini golf mode, which is uh, it's actually brand new to the series this time around. They've got all these crazy holes with uh, with obstacles to get past and stuff. So great. Now, well, I look at Hot Shots Golf Four, and I'm seeing a lot of cartoony characters. They all look crazy. They have some crazy animations, but the golf mechanics actually look uh, pretty realistic. Yeah, the golf is actually really realistic. It's uh, I mean, it's probably just about as realistic as like Tiger Woods or anything like that. And uh, and the, the putting system especially actually is really, really good. It's like probably as good as any other golf game that very, I've played. Very cool. Uh, and now you're telling me also when you were over in England, this game was released but under a different name? Yeah, it's called Everybody's Golf. Everybody's there, Golf? And yeah, and that's actually really appropriate because uh, like just anyone can play this game. You can, you can totally dumb it down, have little kids play it, uh -huh. or you know, if you're really into golf, you can play it you know, and enjoy it just as much. So that's a, that's a good little piece of trivia, I'd probably say right there. When, what's, the, what's, in it, what's Hot Shots Golf known as over in Europe? Could be. And it, <laughs> later on, I'm going to have another trivia question for you where you're going to have the opportunity to win not one, but two GameSpot t-shirts, all right? So basically, I'm going to ask you the question. You're going to use the form. First person to get the correct answer in there, my man Ryan, you'll get these t-shirts. Well, as long as you like a large or an extra large, we got the size for you. Uh, Ryan, how are you doing over there? I'm doing awesome, dude. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm going to sit here and play some uh, golf with Justin. We'll, you can catch up with me later. Right on. I'm going to tell the folks a little bit about some game turns that's been happening. We actually got a chance to visit one in San Jose, California this past week. And we got a little clip for, for you guys to check out on that. Um, and we'll have some news on a new tournament that's actually happening right now as we're speaking. Uh, so those of you in Southern California, once again, uh, might get a chance to go get your, uh, test your skills on at some fighting games. But let's go ahead and take a look at where we were at last week. We're here at the Tech Museum of Innovation, downtown San Jose, home of the Max Games version 
3. It's a fundraiser for the tech using video games and the giant dome screen is a great way to bring kids and adults together playing games in a really social, fun way. Two, three years ago, I guess, now since it's the third year, I was sitting watching a movie and I thought, wouldn't it be great to play Halo on this screen? Called up a couple buddies and checked in with a few people and said, yeah, it's doable, man. And then went to the board of directors here at the Tech, of which I'm a member, and said, we should do this thing because it's great for the uh, age demographic that we have. And it'll open the Tech up to some people who haven't thought about coming downtown. There's some 20-year-olds and 25-year-olds that get heavy into the IMAX games here. We're running uh, some of the more popular games up on the IMAX. Halo is a big one for us, and Smash Brothers Melee. So that's going to be two of the big ones. NASCAR is up there right now, and Super Monkey Ball 2. And then we'll get two more in the middle of the day, probably Downhill Domination, which is a mountain biking game, and uh, maybe one of the other GameCube games. It's a single-day elimination tournament, and uh, you pay a fee, and that fee goes towards the Tech's Education Fund. So all the money that we raise through the player entry fees goes towards the Tech's Education Fund. All the other um, fundraising that we do is through corporate sponsors like GameSpot and GameLender and The Wave Magazine and Palm One to try and make sure we cover all our costs so all the entry goes straight to the Tech. I came to win Super Monkey Ball 2 and I ended up doing that and I have Mario Kart and uh, Downhill Domination to go. The best prizes that we have are for the two most popular games. So those are the, so the King of the Mountain games and they're pyromats and they're these great um, pieces of furniture that you can use to immerse yourself in the games. You sit on it and it has a subwoofer in it, you connect it to your PS2 or your Xbox or your GameCube and then you feel the game as you're playing it. So we have two of those for the top most popular games. And tonight they're going to be Halo and Smash Brothers Melee. The winners of those two games will get the top prizes. We've never had it so big and so bad and so loud. We've got more kids playing, getting higher scores, making more noise, having a good time. And then we're augmenting it with some great uh, interactive chats from people from the Game Developers Association and the San Francisco Art Institute and the guys who do Red vs. Blue talking about things like how do I get into gaming, what kind of classes should I be taking, and where is this and what kind of future is there in gaming for a kid like me. For next year we're hoping to make it even bigger and badder. We usually look for a summertime and we're trying to do it on, we've messed around with each day. It's Friday this time has been a really good day for us. So will be a Friday, probably in July, and we're also trying to figure out how to take advantage of some super games coming out like Halo 2 and see if we can't put together just a Halo 2 tournament when that game comes out. So keep an eye out on thetech.org for news about the Max games. There was a look at our uh, little action we had there at the, the Max games. That, that I, you know, I actually got a chance to go down there, and I have to say it was pretty cool. I mean, the IMAX screen was huge, but like, they didn't, they didn't fill the whole screen up because, of course, the bigger you go, the more, you know, uh, you know unclear it is. So they, they, they had a tight shot on it on the, the IMAX screen. But in that one shot, you can actually see that little guy standing there next to the screen. So to give you an idea is still how huge the, they were, that monkey ball was they were playing. Um, it, was, it was really, really cool. Lots of people there. So what did you think of that tournament? How come we didn't have stuff like that when we were small? <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, uh, should we tell the folks at home a little bit about the tournament that if they're in Southern California, they can actually possibly, I don't know if the, the signups are done or not, but at the very least you can go see something cool. Um, right now there's a tournament starting, I guess the tournament actually officially starts tomorrow morning at 10, right? Mm, yep. It's called uh, Evo 2K uh, and it's basically Friday, July 30th. Champions start at 5 p.m., uh, goes through till August 1st. Uh, there's a thousand players from around the world They'll be competing during the weekend for more than $20,000 in cash. So that's a lot of money. That's a pretty good change. Uh, if I wasn't here right now, I might be on my way to see if I can earn some extra money. Tournament finals start at 5 p.m. Saturday and run through midnight Sunday evening. Um, for any of you near the, uh, I guess, Cal University in Pomona, California, get on over there and check it out. they got some stuff over there. You can go to the evo2k.com website and see some stuff. Um, those guys, and we're actually going to have coverage of that this Saturday. I know Bob Kaleko, one of our featured editors here, he's actually putting something together. So we actually should have some footage of the game tournaments themselves, so you can see, you know, how good these guys are at these games, and uh, you know, maybe someday test your skills. So, but enough about the game tournaments. Um, and by the way, we, we are monitoring all of your questions coming in, and there's a ton of alien hominid questions coming in. We'll, we'll get to those before we leave at the end of the show. Before that, though, I do have uh, my good friend Ricardo Torres here. He's going to tell us a little bit about Beautiful Joe for the PS2. Yes. And you have, you have actually something queued up for us, a little special. I do. So I'm going to unpause it here for y'all. Excellent. Uh, well, this is Dante from, from Devil May Cry. That's awesome. Uh, when Capcom decided to bring Beautiful Joe to the PS2, they wanted to give PS2 owners a little something extra. 
And he, so? he appears not to be wearing any clothing, though. Yeah. <laughs> see, you get your outfit later. Oh. Is, it, is there any kind of, like, bonus or benefit once you do, or is it just kind of, like, it, naked and then... Well, it's just, like, you know, when Joe's human and when oh, he's yeah, not. Oh, yeah, yeah, Oh, I gotcha. It's been so, a while since I played Beautiful Joe. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Shame. But, yeah, so, I, you know, they just made him naked, which it, I guess is all right. So how does this compare? I know you were a huge fan of the GameCube version. You were the one that got me turned on to it. Yeah, we were in Japan together. Yes, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, we bought that special cable so you can play it on the HGTV. Yeah, and it didn't work. <laughs> so tell me, is it a lot different? Is it the same aside from Dante? Or? Uh, so far from what we've seen, it's pretty much the beautiful Joe from the GameCube. But there's Dante, and he's got like his own set of mechanics because he's got a sword and his guns and you know the stuff that makes him Dante. Right on. So, so he, it does change the gameplay a little bit with the guns, yeah, right? Yeah. You can you can do some sick combos and whatnot, and you know uh, it looks like really close to the cube version. Is the cube still got the edge? Really slightly. Yeah. I mean, and that's pretty much because of the magic of the the cable hookup you can do on the TVs. So what about the uh, when's this game actually going to ship? It's going to ship this fall. So how far along is this version we're looking at right now? This one is actually not super final, only because. They just gave us to us as sort of a teaser, like the whole game isn't on this yet. I gotcha. But, I mean, folks do that a lot. They'll give you a little something to get you going. It's, I'm sure the folks at home appreciate it, seeing it for the first time. Yeah. Now, for the PS2 owners that never got a chance to uh, try out the GameCube version, w w what do you have for them? I mean, I, I can tell it myself. I mean, it's a fun game. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it is a really nice kind of old-school update to the kind of brawlers we used to play, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, with some extra special effects thrown in there to make it a little different. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really, like, remember when we first saw it, we didn't think it was going to be, like, as deep as it ended up being. Right. But, hey. And then you start linking your little specials together and, and Then Joe slow gets all of his powers. And and it's a fun, fun game. Oh, yeah. So people can look forward to this in, in, in the fall? Yep, and Dante's about to get his clothes. Oh, awesome. Which is a great way to close out, eh? And he's going to get his guns out, right? Yeah. Well, we got to see him blow away a few enemies before we go. All right, that's <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> well, while we're, uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at some of the questions we're getting while he's getting his guns on. Uh, this comes from uh, Tom Bowen, New York. His mm -hmm. question is, does the storyline change for Dante in the game? Not so much right now. I mean, obviously, Dante and his lady are in it, and so there's a slight tweak, so the game does you know, make some sense. So it's not just like they slap in the same text? Yeah, and yeah it's like, hey, no. Okay. I mean, there's, there's some different stuff, and there's references made to who he is and whatnot. Excellent. Uh, Tom also wants to know, why does Dante sound so much like Austin Powers? Well, because this isn't done, no. <laughs> um, uh, pretty much because Capcom's silly. Awesome. Uh, this one comes from uh, Tommy Chen in Atlanta, Georgia. He wants to know, is there any chance of Beautiful Joe coming out for the Xbox? You know, people said that it wouldn't come out for the PS2. And look what happened. So anything's possible, man. Here's a good question from Eric, uh, Mexico City. Can you use Dante from the beginning, or does he uh, replace Joe? For at least in this particular version of the game that we have, which is work in progress, um, you can either pick him or Joe to start. Excellent. Well, I think we're about done taking a look at Beautiful Joe. Sure. Let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, find out about Rich and uh, our good friend Justin over there, who I think are battling out at golf right now. Well, Ryan, battling out would kind of, uh, I'm losing 46 to 6 right now, so it's not really a battle so much as I'm dominating, I think is the word we're looking for. I think you golf the lower number is what you're looking that's for. What, see, that's what I thought, and that's what I'm gunning for, but Justin, you're about to tell me that that's, I'm wrong, aren't I? Yeah, it's, to it's totally different in, in this. It's, um, basically, you only get two shots to finish a hole, right. and uh, the amount you score is based on how far your ball travels on the shot when you sink it. So okay. you can score like, up to 50 points on one shot. I think that's actually where I've been going wrong, is I've been trying to get 50 points every time, right? That's, that's where I'm well, going wrong. Well, you kind of have to. You, you need to be a bit adventurous and just... Uh, you got, you got to look, the course is all cool. You know, you're playing as one of the crazy characters, uh, Bulldog, and everyone, you must know that that shot right there was not me. <laughs> that was actually Justin. And uh, I'm about to show him how it's done with my, with my guy right here. And I'm going to take a shot. Uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so everyone, you want, you want a trivia question? I have a true wait, let's see if this puck goes in. If this puck goes in, I'll give you three t-shirts. Oh, only two t-shirts. All right, here are your t-shirts right now. 
And as you know, On The Spot is just one of three great uh, regularly featured uh, GameSpot Live productions, the other two being Let's GameSpot and Button Mashing. And Button Mashing just had its uh, third episode. You watched it, right, Justin? Uh, no, not yet. Very <laughs> controversial ending. That's all I'm going to say. And although we're not going to tell you the correct answer on the air because this is a mystery for all time, you'll never know. Some people, if you have a good guess as to who won the final round of, uh, of button mashing, I need the name of the person and the name of the character they used. Uh, send it to uh, Ryan right now using the form on the On The Spot page. And uh, I'm going to give you these two t-shirts right here. If you don't like the extra large, let us know. We'll give you a large, all right? Sounds good? Sounds fair enough? So send in the answer right now. Who won round three of button mashing person and the character? And of course, stay tuned uh, to GameSpot Live all the time for more episodes of button mashing and Let's GameSpot. Ryan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. The, the one thing I'll remind the folks at home is to send in some contact information. If you have an address that we can send you your shirts to, that'd be awesome. But we're actually going to tell them right now, first, first one come in, you know, you're, you're going to get the shirt. So, um, so there's that. But we also have some import games we're going to be taking a look at. Yep. We got our import import watch week two <laughs> takes an effect. Yeah, we got uh, we got here Guilty Gear Asuka. Excellent. Which is the latest Guilty Gear release from Sammy. Um, a lot of people been looking forward to this because it lets you do a lot of crazy things because it's four player. The uh, I mean th that intro that they just showed a second ago it was pretty flashy. Yeah. It's well. like the, the the art style of the Guilty Gear series has always been really really cool. Yeah, these games are just incredibly pretty and they're. You know, they're a nice reminder of what you can do with next generation 2D games. Mm. Because, I mean... And 2D's kind of the theme today, actually. Yeah. <laughs> kind of nice. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a little crazy because, I mean, you know, what, what you see like pretty yeah. often is, you know, people not putting a lot of effort in their 2D stuff right. on this generation. It's kind of a, a dirty port. Uh, but, I mean, the Guilty Gear series has kind of been made for, you know, this generation of platforms and... I mean, you look how high res that stuff is. Yeah, that's beautiful. Now, the characters they have in this one, how does this, I mean, I know that there, there's quite a few Guilty Gear games out there now. Yes. How does this fit in in terms of, like, uh, characters and terms, I know this is actually just came in today, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I won't, get, I, won't, I won't put you on the spot too much, but uh, in terms of characters, I saw the character select screen there, a lot of returning characters. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. It's like, this, the one dependable thing about 2D games is your favorites will be back. Awesome. Uh, I, I, and now the crazy thing is, like, can you still do like the instant death thing that was in the Guilty Gear series? You can try. Oh. But <laughs> it's like the this latest one. I mean, the Guilty Gear games are dope, and you know, unfortunately, they also make sure that you don't get sloppy. Right. I mean, they're pretty hardcore about you know their fan base and making sure that people that really enjoy the kind of insane two D stuff that we all know and love um, stay on their toes. I'm so. sure. Uh, I'm sure Greg and uh, Andrew would be going crazy for the lineup of ga import games we got in today. Well, Greg uh, actually wrote us up. Oh, he's game. got he's got it up already. Uh, pretty, well, it's, it's getting up. Excellent. Because so. we had to rip this game out of his hands to get it here. So. So people will be able to read all about the details that, that Greg's talking about. Oh yeah. Excellent. Now the other cool thing that we didn't mention at the top of the show is that Alien Hominid after on the spot's over will be our Todd slot. Yeah. And you'll be able to read all about Alien Home and get more info from there. Um, plus, we're going to have some extra movies and, as well as the full developer interview that you saw. Um, Guilty Gear X, the last question I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up with is, did they do anything? They're not doing anything crazy online or anything, right? Not yet. Not yet? Now, what is the... the I lied to you. I'm going to ask you another question. All right. I see the four boxes there. It's press start and like it's like... There's two life bars. How does that all work out? You know? Well, pretty much if we had extra folks here and a multi-tap, Really? Everybody could go crazy. Four players on the screen mm -hmm. at one time. Yep. That's awesome. It is, but it's kind of crazy to try and keep track of stuff, but yeah. I, 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 I want a multi <laughs> But uh, We'll get you one later. All right. We're going to hit up some questions, and uh, we're going to switch it over to our other game that we'll be taking a look at. Actually, the other two games. The next game we're going to be taking at. Now, I looked at the case. It's right here. Yeah. It's like Samurai. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Guilty Gear Azuka box. This one right here is the Samurai Showdown. Now, on the disc, it says, I think, Spirits. Mm -hmm. But it's actually, we're going to, is it going to come out here and it's going to be called Samurai Showdown 5? Mm -hmm. Right on. Now, this is, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Samurai Showdown series. I think any fighting game fan is. So, I mean, this just came in as well. So, yeah. how much do we know about this right now? It's based on the arcade version that it's been on test and is out in a lot of places. Um, you know, new cast, new moves. 
this is, you know, this is the kind of Samurai Showdown game that fans have kind of wanted, kind of not. Right. I mean, for a lot of folks, the game, you know, the, the whole f series just kind of stopped at two. Right. <laughs> you know? Uh, and you have fans that are sort of like, you know, digging the different, the different installments that have come out. Uh -huh. So, you know, reaction's been mixed to this one. I mean, we kind of messed around with it, and it's definitely different. Yeah. You know, we're still going to mess around with it some more and kind of figure out, you know, if it's good kind of different or right. it's broken kind of different. Uh, so speaking of good kind of different. Keep looking. So, speaking of good kind of different, we have our two winners. We've got our, our good friends. That was pretty fast. That was, that, was not too, that was not too shabby. So all of you people that followed up with it, I'm sorry, there's actually a bunch of emails that came in. I backed it up to the first two. Um, you can go ahead and stop sending them now. People, people <laughs> have won. But the one thing I will ask, uh, and I won't say your names on the air because you'll know who you are, um, uh, go ahead and send us your contact info. You didn't actually send that in. So um, if I was you and I, I had sent my answer in just now, I would send in my contact info. I know who the two first people were, so we'll get you some shirts if we get your contact info. Um, if I don't get your contact info, we'll obviously pick the next two with the, the address, but I don't have to explain that, right? <laughs> Either way, uh, it looks like we have our Samurai Showdown 5 queued up. We do. Let's take a look at it. Do you mind? Oh, I was going to ask you to get on some first play, but you got to load up. Well, you can, you can just hit start and uh, hop in. I'll get in. You know there. how these work? Uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the, I can get my Hamamaru on. Now, Samurai Showdown 5, for those people at home, is it, does it, differentiate from the series as well? Does it still have the rage gauge? Does it still have all the stuff that, we, that we've come to know and love? It does, but they've been tweaking everything like always. I mean, you're looking here at a, at a cast that some people you know, some people you don't. Um, now the one thing... Then homie with, uh, then you got new guys like Homie oh. with the Swords and the big hair. So the crazy thing is, uh, I mean, it's like we were just looking at Guilty Gear. Mm -hmm. Guilty Gear, I mean, not to knock the Samurai <laughs> series, <laughs> Guilty Gear looks so much like sharper. It, it, it's all about kind of like the style. Right. I mean, when Guilty Gear hit, they were all about the high res sprites. This definitely and retro, right? Yeah, well, they, they yeah, the Guilty Gear series definitely, had, or I guess I should say Samurai Showdown definitely has a few years on the Guilty Gear series, right? Yeah. Oh, this is crazy. How come I don't have my Neo Geo controller? I know. <laughs> That's what everybody said, but uh, I'm doing it. okay. Yeah, you are doing okay. <laughs> I'm not doing. Oh, there we go. I can do that. Congratulations. You, you've <laughs> played this before, apparently. <laughs> I went to go check it out when it was on test here. I'm going to bring it. I Which swear. I do kind of miss, actually. All right. What, going to see arcade games on test? Yeah. Yeah, tell me about it. I mean, it's kind of a shame that, like, the arcade scene, it's kind of winding down in the <laughs> U.S. <laughs> well, that was one of the things we were talking about for, for a, a feature that we're working on right now. Yeah. Is taking a look. I have, you know, ever since I was... Young, I've been going to arcades and taking my video camera along for the ride, and so I've got all this footage that we have from you know ten years ago of when arcades were big. So we're, we're going to do something special, and you just are beating me to. I was like, dude, don't say it like that. <laughs> ten years ago, we ain't that old, but so, I guess we are. Yeah, totally. So this is not online as uh, either. No. Man, Sorry, man. I need some online action. Well, I mean, to be fair, uh, Majesco's bringing out an online guilty gear. Oh, oh, an online guilty gear for the Xbox in the U.S. So I'm doing some business. We're also going to have a write-up. Is Greg doing the write-up for this one? Uh, actually, Jeff is doing that one. Fantastic. He's going to be getting around to that, I believe, tomorrow, because we stole the game from him. Oh, right on. I, I actually uh, put the hurt on you that time. Yeah, congratulations. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at some more of our questions sure. while we uh, load up our last and final game, Street Fighter. Oh, God, this is going to get ugly. Yeah, I I'll get you on the Street Fighter. All right. The, uh, and then for the folks at home, Street Fighter is not actually one of the import games that we're looking at. It's coming to the U.S. Mm -hmm. This is a U.S. version we're taking a look at. How far along is this build? It's pretty far along. There's a couple things it's still got to fix. Like, mm -hmm. there's going to be some, you know, edits made and stuff. But uh, this is, like, as far as gameplay goes, it's pretty solid. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, this one is not online, right? The Xbox version of, of there's, there's a new Street Fighter collection coming out that's, that's online, right? Yeah. For the Xbox. The, uh... Here is some of our, our questions. I'm going to actually hit up some of the Alien Homine questions that have been coming in. Um, first off, is the game, and this comes from the UK, um, so it, it's, it's a good question for him. He wants to know, is it going to come out there? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, right now, we only know for sure that it's coming out in the States. The, uh, and we already answered that question. Yes, it is, in fact, going to come out. Yeah. And uh, Eric from Mexico City, he all wrote back in and just said that uh, it's awesome that people are starting to remember 2D games as being a whole lot of fun and making them again. Um, 
Is there any unlockables or unlockable difficulty modes? In Alien? Yes. There is a ton of unlockable stuff. Um, there are mini games uh, that, like, when you first like play the game, there's like those PDA games that you saw. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is, I believe, three or four other unlockable mini games for you and another player. And the dope thing is, there are unlockable hats. Uh, oh, oh yeah, you were <laughs> telling me about that. Because uh, what you got is when you have a second player come in, there's just like a red hat, so you can kind of tell them apart. But the really cool thing is, as you go further in the game and you do certain things, you earn high enough scores, you start to earn unlockable hats. Gotcha. And they're kind of a crazy bunch of guys, right. so there's going to be a lot of weird stuff you're going to be putting on your head. That's cool. Yeah. You, can, you can tell us about a few, maybe? Yeah, there's like, you know, like Viking hat. I don't know. Do they yeah. actually do anything for you, or do they just look cool? It's not power up, man. <laughs> just look cool. Here's a question from Golden Boy, New Orleans. How far in development are they in Alien Hominid, and does it look polished? They're pretty far along. Uh, they've been at it for a while. Uh, they, they've been going to Comic-Con, like, you know, for the past two years, and mm. keeps, you know, looking more polished as it, as it goes along. The, what we've seen so far is, you know, pretty, it, it's getting there. And, it, you know, of course, you know, it's looking polished, and it's got its own style. Like, it doesn't have, like, that overly slick thing. Here's our, our favorite, oh wow, we gotta take a look at this. Can we switch over and take a look at the Street Fighter action real quick? This is the intro to the game and it looks kinda cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a, yeah. I, I know I've said it like three times for all the games that we've seen today, but yeah, I'm in heaven today. It's like Andrew and Greg and me and Jeff. It's like we're gonna sit down and we're gonna get some Street Fighter, some Guilty Gear, and some Shamurai Showdown when the show's over. So, Street Fighter Anniversary Collection, you know, tell the folks at home what it's got in it, what it's all about? It's got all the good Street Fighters. <laughs> right on. Uh, it's got from Street Fighter 2 all the way through the World Warriors. Wow. Which is where we got the new, the new folks in. Uh, which is pretty much what everybody's been asking for. Right. <laughs> you know, because, I don't know, three, 3 was cool, but 3 was also very different. Right. You know, that game started to become more about technique. And, you know, the old stuff, that was just all about getting your business on. Now, th are they adding anything, or is it just straight up, all the originals, here you go? Yeah. It, it's a little different in that you can choose to play as different characters from different ones. It's probably easiest if I just show you. Because once you go into, you can... Oh, look at that. Yeah, got them both. That's cool. Uh, so, oops, wrong button. So, when you go into the anniversary collection... Mm -hmm and you pick a character, you will then have the option to pick what version of that character. So it's like w from which yeah. individual game? Yeah. So we're going to... So then you can match them up against each other. So if I want yeah. Ken from... You know, tournament edition versus Ken from the original. There you go. Yeah. So, so if, you, if, you, if you're old school and keeping it real, you totally... So, you know, you got all these normal championship turbo, super turbo. Nice. And you know, if you if you really want to show your skills, you could be like <laughs> you pick normal. The old guys, right? <laughs> you pick the old guys with no meters, no nothing, and you just go at it. Is, now, do they are they, do they match the speed, or is it does the one guy play like old school speed? Or well, let's find out. Oh, let's do it. Let me get my my I'm star pick, button on. Uh, normal. You're gonna pick normal who? Let's see. I'm I'm gonna pick. Normal Chun Li, you pick Super. Why don't you pick Super Turbo somebody? How about Super Turbo Ken? All right, there we go. All right. No, I didn't pick her. Yet. You didn't pick her. Yeah, yeah, X right. button. There you go. So, so the one question I have is like, uh, oh, uh, no, I'll hold my question until you <laughs> get done. <laughs> now it's on. <laughs> as you can see, the icon at the bottom of the screen says who you are playing as. Oh yeah, yeah. So there's no confusion in case one of your buddies tells you he picked somebody else and didn't. Right. And if, if, if people didn't know the answer to Richard's question, if they watch this game carefully, they can, uh, they should be able to tell what was going to happen at the end of button matching if they were wondering. Aww. Oh, wait, she didn't have a fireball. Oh, that's yeah, going up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Collection, when's it coming out? This fall. This fall. Actually, this summer, I believe. This summer? Oh, this summer? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and answer a few questions before we go ahead and sign off for the day. Sure. You want to hang out with me before you go? Sure. All right, cool. Because uh, actually, one of these questions I got for you, this comes in uh, from Zach in Lake Oswego, Oregon. I hope I pronounced that right. Sorry. 
Uh, with James U now on the spot, is there a possibility of hardware tech page on the GameSpot site? I've always wanted one, and I think it would be useful for gamers. For you, I'll say stay tuned. Uh, James U is doing some cool stuff for us right now. Next week, I believe he's going to have a feature that's going to talk about the hardware you'll need or will want to have for Doom 3. Um, so, yeah, we got James doing all kinds of busy stuff around here. So be, be glued to the site. You'll see some more from him. This comes from Trey in Augusta, uh, Georgia. Uh, could you show something about clans? I've never been in one, but I would like to be in one, um, and I'd like to know more about it. If you would, I'd be grateful. Actually, Trey, you can already go and see something. We've done it, uh, I guess it was a while back, but now maybe like six, seven months. I can't remember. But uh, if you go to the Planet Side game space and scroll down in the movie section, you'll find a special feature that we did on the Devil Dogs, which is, at the time, it was the Planet Side's largest group of players. Uh, I think it was... I can't remember how many they had at that time. It was like 2,000 or something. There was a crazy amount of people they had in there. And those guys are still playing. Uh, I, I just saw them like last week, and they were still all, all gaming and doing all kinds of fun stuff. This comes from Al Gordon in Florida. Every day I learn more about your site. Keep up the good work. Question, will there ever be a Killer Instinct or Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the GBA, or will it wait for the next generation handhelds? Hmm. That's a question I think you should answer. So Killer Instinct is going to be kind of tough. <laughs> Because uh, Rare no longer is in the Nintendo family, right. so that's going to make it tough. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Capcom's definitely said that they're on board for PSP fighting games. They've hinted at some stuff, they've shown some stuff. Uh, whether or not it's going to be that one, who knows, but pretty sure we're going to get you know, some Capcom fighting action on the portable, so you can't complain. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, and then the crazy thing is going to be wireless. So you can play against people, and they're not even there. Uh, my man Rich Gallup is looking for, for, for some action over there. Rich. Uh, I just got a real quick shot. Uh, what you guys are seeing right now is uh, me winning 82 to 23. And oh. anyone who lost faith in my ability to pick up and play a game well, including several of my coworkers, rest assured I'm now dominating. Thank you. <laughs> Until the shot. Oh, sorry, Justice. All right. Well, thank you, Rich. But uh, I think we're totally over time. It's 446. We actually gave you a little bit more show than, uh, than we planned to. Um, but, yeah, we want to give you everything we want, uh, everything you want. So, by all means, please, if you uh, have any questions, send them in. If you're a GameSpot Complete user, use the form. If you have any feedback for us on things you'd like to see in the future or how we could do things better here for you, go ahead and send them to onthespot at GameSpot.com. Of course, throughout the whole week, you can send, as you're watching this, if you don't watch it live, Please go ahead and send the questions in anyways. We'll get them, and we'll try to address the majority of them on the next live webcast, which, of course, is Thursday, next Thursday, 4 o'clock. So be sure to come back and watch it then. Uh, of course, Let's Game Spot, game, uh, button mashing, all kinds of fun stuff throughout the week. There's going to be tons of cool content that's going to be showing up. Uh, I know for a fact there's going to be cool stuff coming up over the weekend. But, uh, so definitely come back. Next week, we got a, we got a few surprises. Our friends from Ubisoft will be coming by. Yeah. Oh, Ghost Recon 2 on the spot. Uh, so if you have any specific questions for the Ghost Recon 2, please send them in, and we'll make sure to ask them. Also, uh, you all might want to come back tomorrow for some more GTA stuff. Ooh. Can you give us a preview? Uh, that's what's, that's what's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it's going to be a full, full, full preview? Yeah. Like everything we know about it so far? Yeah, and some exclusive stuff. Ooh. And, and, and the folks, that, if you haven't wa seen the stuff already, we had that featured last week. Mm -hmm. So definitely check it out if you haven't seen the, the GTA stuff. Um, and that's pretty much it from here. Um, basically, for Rich, for the GameSpot Live crew, GameSpot here, at Ricardo Torres, thank you so much for coming by and helping us out, getting all this great stuff. You, you are a big help. Thank you so much. Trying. Um, to all you at home, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week and throughout the week.